عباس علی میں ہوں عباس علی یہ ہے فضیلت میری میں ہوں عباس علی یہ ہے فضیلت میری بنت احمد کی دعا سے ہوئی خلقت میری میں ہوں عباس علی میں ہوں عباس علی اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین ولاقبت لاہل تقوی والیقین والصلاۃ والسلام علی شرف الانبیاء والمرسلین خاتم النبیین ابل قاسم محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم والہ طیبین الطاہرین المعصومین لا سیما بقیت اللہ فی الارضین روحی و ارواح العالمین اتراب مقدم الفدا واللعنت الدائمت على اعدائه مجمعین من الان الى قیام یوم الدین Um, we are celebrating the Viladat of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas uh, uh, ibn Imam Ali salam <coughs> and Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas salam was born on the 4th of Sha'ban and he is born in 26 Hijra so in Karbala he was 34 34 and a half um, and Um, he is an, a, an, a magnificent personality who has many different qualities. He is an excellent example, role model for, for all people. His knowledge, his courageousness, his obedience to the Imams, his uh, ibadat, his... Uh, and jihad his um, generosity and many many other qualities and uh, there are many books on him compiled by many different scholars um, there are two there's a two volume book in farsi which is uh, compiled by uh, I, uh, ali rabbani khalkhali which is um, an excellent piece of work on Abu al-Fadil al-Abbas alayhi salam. And there are others who have also compiled by Sayyid Abdul Razak Muqarram. Um, and many, many other scholars have uh, written on him extensively in Arabic, in Farsi, in Urdu, in many other languages. He is the uh, the army chief in Karbala, for him to uh, be the commander in Karbala from Imam Sallallahu tells you a lot about him. And for Imam Sajjad in the presence of Imam Hussain to bury him separately, to give him a separate haram in Karbala. And there are only two uh, shrines that have independent, uh, you know, there are two independent shrines. One is of Imam Hussain and in his and very close to him are all the shuhada in one place and near him is uh, Habib ibn Mudahir uh, but for Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas salam, to have his own haram in Karbala tells you a lot about him tells you how great he is and how tremendous uh, his personality is So very briefly, I'll go into his personality. He is, after the 14 infallibles, the scholars believe that he is, uh, after the 14 infallibles, he is the greatest personality, uh, leaving aside Hazrat Zainab al-Kubra. Zainab al-Kubra is the greatest personality uh, after the 14, 14 infallibles amongst the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. So in Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, um, uh, after the 14 infallibles, the 14 personalities of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib وسلم, Fatima Zahra and the other uh, Imams, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussain وسلم, Imam Zainal Abidin and up to Imam al-Mahdi and after them it is Zainal Abu Kubra and then Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. Abu al-Fadl, uh, his uh, kunniya uh, when on his birth Imam Ali gave him was Abu al-Fadl. Abu al-Fadl is uh, father of Fadl. Fadl, he also named his uh, son Fadl. But also uh, Fadila and Fadl is uh, virtue. So he's the father of virtue. He's the father of virtue, 
personality. So he was very virtuous in terms of he had he was a father of fadail, father of virtues. And uh, he is famously known for his courage, his uh, uh, um, courage of fighting the enemies and controlling uh, large armies. So he was he fought, according to many historians, in Sifin, and he was only thirteen then, or probably younger. Uh, and he was uh, he is known for a few qualities. He's very learned, but his few qualities are outstanding. Number one, his wafa, his faithfulness to the Ahlul Bayt al He is extremely faithful to uh, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain al-Islam after his father. And in his ziyarat, you read the words, uh, As-salamu alayka ya abal fadil abbas, al-muti'u lillahi wa li rasoolahi wa li amir al-mu'minin wa li hassan wa li hussain sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the, this word that if you want, you know, in the Holy Quran it says, Ya ayyuhu alladhin amanu ati Allah wa ati rasoola wa ulil amre minkum. O you who believe, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obey the Holy Prophet and obey the ones uh, manifested with power from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ulil amr. Now, if you want to see one example who has followed all of those obedience to the highest level, then you just look at Abu al-Fadil Abbas once. So he is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is obedient to the Holy Prophet and he is obedient to the Imams of his time. Imam Ali alayhi salam, fine, that was his father but also his Imam. He was the son of an Imam. And then to Imam Hassan alayhi salam and Imam, then Imam Hussain alayhi salam, he proved, you know, the Ahlul Bayt, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam in his word says uh, 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 that he gave his life for his brother um, for Nehmal Akhul Muasi, you know, and he's uh, what a great brother to sacrifice everything uh, for the sake of his master and his brother. His mother is an excellent personality who is famously known as Ummul Banin, the mother of sons, brave sons, but her name was also Fatima. And uh, Fatima bin Te Hazam. Hazam is basically, he's a tribal leader of Kilab, Bani Kilab. He's a uh, uh, so his grandfather and his uncles and forefathers from his mother's side were all warriors. And Imam Ali al-Islam had asked his brother Aqil that I want to marry into a family. Uh, even though Imam knows as an Imam who to marry, but he, is, he, he wants the people to know and his brother to look for a, a perfect match for him and to, uh, to, who would bear him a son who would f represent him in Karbala, who would fight for him in Karbala. So basically he wants a son who would be so obedient to Imam Hussain al-Islam and loyal to him. Basically he wants someone who is loyal and a warrior. And hence he marries uh, Fatima or Umm al -Banin. And Umm al has four sons. And the oldest one of them is Abu al-Fadil Abbas. The other sons are... Um, Ja'far Abdullah and Uthman. Uthman was named after Uthman and Mada'un, the uh, brother of the Holy Prophet and Imam Ali al -Islam. Not directly, but he was very close to them. So Imam Ali al said, I named my son uh, Uthman after Uthman ibn Mada'un. And not the third Khalif, Uthman ibn Affan, but Uthman ibn Mada'un, who was very beloved to the Holy Prophet and Imam Ali al So nevertheless, so they are four brothers and... Uh, Abbas ibn Ali is the oldest. He is extremely loyal and his mother teaches him not to call his brothers Hassan and Hussain alayhi salam brother. Don't call them Akhi, Ya Akha. So he said, what should I call them as a young boy? And she said, because they're sons of uh, Fatima, Fatima to Zahra salam alayha, call them Sayyidi wa Malai, or my master or my leader. So all his life or my, he called them Sayyidi wa Malai. Um, to, to both Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain alayhi salam. He was extremely loyal to both of them. And in his life he has proven uh, to the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam and to the others that he is the most loyal personality to the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. He is obviously amongst the Ahlul Bayt but 
to the infallible Imams, he is extremely important. The Ahlul Bayt al have not praised anyone as much as they have praised Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas And um, um, although <clears throat> he is proven to be very knowledgeable uh, because he learned directly from Imam Ali ibn Talib al he learned how to fight as a warrior from Imam Hassan a.s. But he was a teacher of all of his uh, nephews, the sons of Imam Hassan, the sons of Imam Hussein. Uh, uh, well, he did not teach Imam Sajjad al but he taught Ali Akbar, Qasim Abdullah, all the sons of you know, uh, Hassan and Musanna. So he taught the sons of Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain al and the sons of his sisters and everyone else, his younger brothers, how to fight. Uh, how to use a sword, how to use bow and arrow, how to use a javelin. Um, so he was an extra, extraordinary, tremendous fighter. And um, his bravery was well known amongst the people of Medina. Uh, but his first quality is his loyalty to the Imam Sallallahu Imam Ali Islam sees him fight in Sifin and also uh, in um, uh, Imam Hassan al Islam's time. And during the reign of Imam Hassan, Imam Hassan faced a lot of problems from uh, the people of Medina, uh, the betrayal from uh, the, uh, the people of Kufa, and uh, many other issues he confronted with. When he moved back to Medina, many people started. Uh, disrespecting the Imam al-Islam, Imam Hassan al-Islam. And it was Abbas al-Islam who always uh, stood up to defend uh, Imam Hassan al-Islam and uh, with Imam Hassan al-Islam, it was Hazrat Abbas al-Islam who not only defended but also answered the people. Because it doesn't be seem right for the Imam to be defending himself all the time, but the Imams did answer the people. When they, they question them or they, you know, they ask them, why did you um, not kill Muawiyah? Why did you not fight him? Why did you leave him to rule? Then it was Abbas al -Islam who answered. Imam Hassan al -Islam was left with no choice when people betrayed him because the Imam's fight was not for himself, but it was for the people, for the Ummah. Nevertheless, um, we leave that to another Time, but it was again Abbas al -Islam in Medina who continuously defended Imam Hassan al -Islam. When a blind person came to, to Medina uh, asking for Imam Hassan al -Islam, he, uh, he had a stick where he had a nail in the stick and he, when he asked uh, the people where Imam Hassan al -Islam was, he um, put his stick in the foot of Imam Hassan al -Islam and he made a hole in, in, and his foot was bleeding and when Abbas al -Islam heard, he knew the punishment for the uh, for the person who disrespects the Imam and he went and punished him. So it was Abbas al -Islam defending his brothers. He was always protective and when Imam Hussain al -Islam was called uh, upon by uh, Marwan and Walid uh, to pay allegiance to Yazid, it was again Abbas al -Islam who went with him to protect him and uh, Imam Hussain al -Islam said I don't need protection but uh, he said, I'll come with you. He said, yes, you come and you stay outside the, the, the palace. And if you hear me raise my voice, then you, you, then you come in. So then only enter uh, the governor house or the house of the, you know, the palace of the governor. And when Imam Hussain raised his voice, Abbas tried to open the door. And when he saw that the door, uh, you know, the gate had been locked, he you know, pushed it down. You know, he... he um, basically broke the door down and he came inside, walked inside uh, uh, asking for the orders of Imam Hussain who, uh, who to confront and who to fight and who to kill. And Imam Hussain said, no, this is the city of my uh, grandfather, uh, the Holy Prophet وسلم, so we will not fight. And we leave Medina um, to go elsewhere to not fight in Medina. So we'll fight elsewhere. So this is Abbas al who was extremely loyal. So he is his loyalty to Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain al -Islam. Secondly, his second quality is uh, his um, uh, courageousness. He is extremely brave. 
and Imam Ali Islam praises him for his bravery and that he does not fear anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Imams, you know, he fear in the sense that he respects them greatly so he is always, he puts his head down and does not raise his head to, to talk to them. You see, many times people are very strong and they are brave but they are disrespectful uh, because they are so brave and so strong. Um, bravery does not mean that you uh, disrespect others and you bully others. Bravery means that you help the, the weak and you do not raise your voice and fight except for the evil and the oppressor. And that was the greatest quality in Abbas al-Islam. So he did not, he wasn't an angry man and uh, when he went angry he was out of control. No, in the greatest of his moments when he was in anger, he had the most control over his anger. In Laylat Ashura, and you know, in Shabe Ashur, in the night, in the eve before Ashura, uh, when the enemies attack, or well, not just the evening before, but two nights before. So tomorrow was the ninth of Muharram, and the enemies attacked in Karbala, and he came running to Imam Al Islam because Imam Al Islam had stopped him from fighting on second of Muharram when Hur said that you move your tents. So he comes to Imam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and says that um, we've been attacked. The history only mentions the words. It does not mention the actions or the, the way those words were delivered. So he, uh, uh, you, know, the history, you know, I believe that he's not informing Imam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we've been attacked, but he's seeking permission from Imam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, saying that we've been attacked, so do you permit me now? You said we will not begin on 2nd of Muharram when Hur attacked. You said we will not begin the battle. Uh, now we've been attacked, meaning they have begun attacking us. So shall I go and fight? So this is, he's implying when he says, have we been attacked? And Imam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, may I be your sacrifice? This is not even said to Ali Akbar Alayhi Salaam. So when he says this to Abbas, um, he says, go and ask him for one night's permission to say that we... Don't attack us tonight. Um, uh, give us one more night. Um, and uh, Abbas al is uh, is not the person to go and speak to and communicate to the enemies of Imam Hussein al -Salam. Imam Hussein could have asked any person from his uh, army, you know, small group of people, companions, to go and seek one more day from. Umar Saad, but he says it to Abbas. Why? Because it is the most difficult for Abbas to go and speak and, and take permission from Umar Saad and say, don't attack us. Um, but he wants to show the people that, look, I am ordering Abbas and Abbas does not step out of the line from the orders of the Imam al-Islam, even though he's the bravest and the most courageous and the most, um, uh, you know, the greatest of the fighters, but he does not say, I'll disobey the Imam. He does not stop. He says, if it is your order, then fine, I'll go and do this. And that's why in his jihad e asghar he's doing jihad e akbar jihad e asghar is to go and fight in the battlefield and jihad e akbar you know, the small jihad is to go and fight in the battlefield and the greater jihad is to fight against your own, own um, uh, desires, against your own uh, inner self and Abbas proves uh, that even in the greatest of the uh, moments he will never disobey the Imam of his time and that's the greatest example for me. So he goes and tells Umar Saad and Umar Saad says okay I'll give you Aman, I'll, uh, I'll, you are uh, under protection if you don't fight. He says hang on a minute, are you um, uh, telling me to leave my brother and my imam and my master, that will never happen. I'm only talking to you because my master, my imam, my brother ordered me to speak to you. Otherwise, I would not even speak to you. So I'm only speaking to you because my brother has told me to. So this is the greatness of Abbas ibn Ali The other uh, and the last aspect of his life that I would like to talk about is his love and respect for 
the Ahl al-Bayt al-Muslam that he respects. Zainab uh, al-Kubra, uh, he respects uh, the daughters of the Ayman al-Muslam. So much so that they all feel protected under him. They all feel that when he is present, we can all rest and we can all sleep peacefully because Abbas is there to protect us. And Imam Hussain al-Islam says that uh, after his martyrdom that, O oh Abbas, the people who slept with uh, peace will not be able to sleep after you. And the people who could not sleep because you were still alive, they will be uh, sleeping in, uh, in, uh, in peace now because you are no longer there to protect or to, uh, to challenge them. So this is... Um, this is his respect for the, uh, the members of the household of Ahl al-Bayt al A scholar once uh, saw, in, uh, saw Abbas al in his dream and uh, uh, um, Abbas asked him a few questions and the scholar could not answer and uh, he said, well, did you doubt my knowledge? Do you uh, not understand that I am the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib? So this scholar came and uh, told the people how learned um, uh, Abbas al Islam is, or he uh, questioned uh, Salman al Farisi because uh, the scholar had said that Salman is m more important, Salman radiallahu anhu is more important than Abbas. So then he said, No, Abbas al Islam is superior and better and higher uh, in all dimensions from the companion of the Holy Prophet Salman al Farisi. Or Muhammadi Salman Muhammadi radiallahu anhu. Um, so it is uh, 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 Abbas ibn Ali uh, who is from an early childhood known to be Abbas. Abbas is in Arabic a lion um, that is roaring or a lion that the lions uh, run away from. And Imam Ali al-Islam named him Abbas when he picked him up and he kissed his hands. And Umm al-Banin started crying and said, why are you? Uh, so Imam Ali al-Islam asked her, why are you crying? And she said, because I have heard that whenever a child is born to you, you always kiss them on the face. But probably um, he is not worth as much as the other children. And you have only kissed his hands. He said, no, I've kissed his hands because he will lose his hands in Karbala. So that's why I've kissed him on his hands. So Abbas is extremely important to the Ahl al-Bayt al-Muslam. They all have praised him. Imam Sajjad al-Islam, in his words about Abbas ibn Ali, says that, Inna li ammi al-Abbas maqaman inda Allah yaghbituhu bihi jami'u shahada. Indeed, my uncle Abbas has a... Um, uh, position before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all shahada will um, long for his position on the day of judgment. So he has the uh, highest and the best position amongst the shahada after the 14 infallibles. Uh, we will end here uh, praying that may Allah uh, give us the ziyarat of Abbas ibn Ali in Karbala and may Allah uh, uh, bless us with the intercession of Abbas ibn Ali as he is um, an, uh, 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 an excellent and magnificent personality uh, who will intercede on the Day of Judgment, who will also come back to this world uh, when the 12th Imam comes uh, to show how strong and how courageous he was to take revenge from the murderers and the enemies of Imam Hussain al-Islam. We pray that this happens soon. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدَ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ मद की दुआ से हुई खिलकत मेरी मैं हूँ अरबा से अली मैं हूँ अरबा से